center, please. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good Hi. afternoon. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Center for Memories. Well, I just hope you guys are open today because I've heard so much. Of and course. I want to see for myself what this repository of evil culture is all about. Of course, the center is open. So we usually open from um, Mondays to Saturdays, right. 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So you are you are in luck. Oh, so so it's welcome. a warm welcome then. You are welcome. So. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to the Center for Memories. I'm Thanks. sure you've heard a bit about the Center, but just, you know, in case you've not. You're welcome to another episode of Eastern Promises here at Afia TV. As you know, Eastern Promises is a show about people, institutions, anything and everything in the Southeast that showcases Igbo greatness. And today on this program, we are at Center for Memories in Ugu, a place that is also known as the repository of Igbo culture and history to learn about the center, what led to it, and of course, the woman who will be giving us an interesting tour much later on the program. Thank you so much for granting us this interview, Foma. Thank you. Always nice a pleasure to see you. Yeah, same here. Well, I would like to learn more about you first and foremost. What led you to this center? What made you want to become staff here? And what were you before Center for Memories? Okay, um, so my name is Ifoma Nomani. I'm actually, I actually have a background in physics because often when people ask and I tell them, they're usually very surprised. But, but I've always been interested in like history, storytelling. I've always loved stories. So in 2019, I... I had just finished, um, I was I was a teacher, I worked on a project, a community development project, and I was free a bit at the time. And, you know, someone invited me to one of the programs of the center. At the time, I didn't know about the center. I didn't know about the work that they did. So I just found the lecture, then Katao maybe one of their programs, and I loved the topic. And I said, okay, I would like to be part of this. So I attended the lecture and then, the chairman of the board of directors of the center, Mr. Patrick Okibo. So he took the stage to like talk about the center and the work they are doing, the library that they have for children, the programs they have for children. And it was like, they set me on fire that night. And I'm like, are you serious? They have a center like this in this Enugu. And I wanted to be part of it. And then luckily, shortly after that um, lecture that I attended, they called for volunteers and the way I jumped on it. So I applied to be a volunteer and I came here. So I was being, I was a tour guide. I was giving people tours. I was helping to like um, catalog books. I was in charge of the children's program. So a lot, you know, just, I was just like in my element. So that was how I grew from being a volunteer. Now I'm a program officer. So, cause it's a job that I love. It's something that I love to do and love to, I especially love the work that the center is doing and I wanted to be part of it. So that was how. <music> So um, very quickly, I'm going to like um, take you around, All right. um, show you our exhibitions I'm that we have. I'm going to see Igwe's like walking towards <laughs> me because the impression I have now, I'm going to see dancers and Igwe's. <laughs> I, I want to just get to it immediately. <laughs> oh, well, um, I'm sure you're going to see a lot of other more interesting things. Um, All right. Yeah, uh, if not dancers. Wow, All right, so you're welcome here. Big. And um, yeah, so we currently have two exhibitions okay. going on concurrently here. We have an exhibition titled Ordina and Igbo Cosmology and Spirituality. And then one of our very important exhibitions titled Ozermena on the Nigeria Biafra War. And um, very quickly, I'm going to be showing you around. So ordinarily talks about, looks at okay, the traditional... Okay, you're about to give me a lecture. On that. No, a, if it's you call it a lecture, it sounds it's like very lecture. boring. I'm going to give you a tour, a guided tour. Le, le, is, is it free? <laughs> Am I paying for this lecture? Um, It's going to cost you a lot of money, but then, I mean, because it's you, we can we can discuss discount. So I get some preferential treatment? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can discuss discount. All right, so... Odina and he looks at um, the traditional belief system of the Igbo people, what um, our forefathers believe in, you know, our religion and all that, everything that in, it entails. So Igbo people believe that there are different realms. So there is the realm of the sky, Igwe, where the Supreme God lives. There is the realm of the earth, where humans and nature spirits and all that, where they inhabit. And then you have Alamo, that's the third realm, where 
um, where spirits, the ancestors, they live. And then you also have the other side of it where the bad spirits go. But then there's something else that Igbos believe very important in reincarnation. So Igbos believe that death is not the end of life. So every human soul has a chance to come back to life many times. Some people are lucky to come back as many times as seven. Some people eight. And with each coming, you know, you keep improving on your former life and you keep, you know, achieving whatever it is that you've agreed with your chi prior to coming into the world. So you get to achieve your destiny. So that's what reincarnation um, does for you. So as we progress, you're going to um, see the different aspects of um, Igbo cosmology. You also get to see um, the different masqueries that they have in some parts of Igbo land because, you know, masqueries represent the link between the living and the dead. They are like spirits of dead ancestors come back to life, right? So they, they come out, the ancestors have days that they come out in physical forms and they come out in form of masqueries. Masquerade. So as we progress, you're going to see them. So like this particular masquerade is called Amurong. So um, this work, this masquerade um, artwork were um, created by Choma. But the Choma is an artist who does a lot of work around Igbo masks and masquerades. So, and most of the masquerade that you see are from, you know, his side of um, Igbo land. He's from Anambra, he's from Adazin, Nupu. So you're going to be seeing a lot of masquerades from that side of Igbo land. So you have Amurong, who is the father figure, who is the father of the house. He's an old man who has seen life, you know, he has seen things as you can see from the, Yeah, and then we have this masquerade here. You've met the father of the house. So this is the mother. Nemau, beautiful, beautiful, elegant, yeah, you know, she just looks um, reserved and quiet. And then this is Adama. Adama is the first daughter of the family, also beautiful and elegant. Then this masquerade here is the second daughter of the family, Ogurugu. Um, so this is the head part of the Ogurugu masquerade, the Ogidi of the Ogurugu masquerade. This is her waistband, Awolo. And this is what the full Ogurugu masquerade looks like, really colorful beautiful elegant and she just you know she just wants to dance and show off herself so and that's one thing that you notice with most of the female masquerade and then okwalosi so okwalosi is um the shrine so every deity every deity has his or her own shrine dedicated to it with a chief priest or priestess that lives in the shrine and serves the deity and you know you can there are things you usually find in the shrine like ikoro Oko, Ofo, Okwamo, Udu, Omu, and the rest. So they usually use the Omu to barricade, you know, to designate that this place is a sacred ground, that is a shrine, so that people don't trespass anyhow. And then you also um, would find some musical instruments because once the masquerade is coming out, you have the musical uh, music accompanying. So you have the Oja, you have the Ewa, you have the Ogene, you have the Echaka. So we have the Echaka here. And um, so uh, some of these instruments alone, they don't make a lot of sense. But then when they all come together, when they combine, they, you know, produce if, very if I, wonderful. If I handle that, anything happen to me? <laughs> Let Nothing me... will happen. No, 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 please go ahead. And then, I, I, don't, I don't want to. Yeah, just jiggle it. Yeah. Just offend any it. of our <laughs> no, 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 no. Or call up something. <laughs> no, no, you won't. So is... Yeah, so this is Ichaka. Yeah. And then you have the Ubaka. This is one of my favorites. Um, I think um, Gerald, Gerald has been to Afia TV before. So Gerald is one of the uh, known or uh, popular people in modern times who play the Ubaka. It's really very beautiful. So you hold on to it like this and then I don't know how to play. So don't take anything I play. Don't take it seriously. But I can tell a lot about you and your person just by listening to you. You have a good heart. Someone that children are easily drawn to. You can tell that a person has a very, very good heart. So even by the fact that you're, you're interested in humanitarian activities, you came here because you saw the potential to volunteer. That says a lot about you as a person. But let's talk about okay. the center too. Okay. What's the Center for Memories all about? And how do you feel working here on a daily basis? Okay, so the Center for Memories is was set up in 2017, in December 2017, and the idea behind it was um, a place, the founders wanted to have a place where anybody who is interested in learning about Igbo culture, about Igbo history, where you can come to, right, to learn. And part of the work that the Center does is exhibitions. Part of the way that the Center does that is through exhibitions. So between that 2017, when the Center was opened and now, 
uh, we've had about 12 exhibitions, if I'm not mistaken, and the exhibitions cut across like different aspects of Igbo culture, Igbo life. We've had an exhibition on reviving locks, technologies and innovations of Igbo. We've had an exhibition that spotlighted notable Igbo individuals, iconic Igbo individuals and their contribution to Nigeria and the world. We've had an exhibition on the Nigeria Biafra War and another one on Odinani. We also partner with, you know, artists and museums from you know different parts of the world to also host exhibitions but beyond the exhibitions there are other programs i already mentioned in Katao Mibu, so it's a monthly lecture series and what we do with that is to bring you know professionals different individuals distinguished professionals from across different fields to talk on critical issues that affect Igbo people and how we can move the region forward. Then we have a program for children, Uzukomaka, which is one of my favorite because I mean, the idea is to like capture them young, we want to catch them young, we want to raise a generation of young Igbo people who are not just grounded in their history, but they're also proud of their identity, their Igbo identity, you know, they wear their identity with pride. And we have book clubs, you know, for book lovers, for children and adults. We host film shows and memorials and documentaries, we have documentaries, like we actually have a documentary um, on the Nigeria Biafra War. We have another one on Dr. M. I. Obara, Dr. Michael Obara, who was the former premier of Eastern Region. We, ha we have another one on Mazi, um, Ukono, and you know, and we are still hoping to do more. So that's um, what the center does. And then to your question about how I feel working here. So uh, I've been here at the center for four years and it's been an interesting journey for me. I've, I've seen myself grow in the job. So it's a job that I love, but then I've also seen myself grow and become a better person, become a better leader. So I used to be a very shy person. I know a lot of people wouldn't believe it, but I used to struggle with public speaking and all. But Center has given me the platform to like grow in that. Like I can stand in front of any audience and like make a presentation or speak to any topic that um, I, I need to and i get it done i've also become you know, more confident more experienced in programming as well you know the other the nitty-gritty about you know planning programs and executing these are things that the center has given me the opportunity to like learn and become so yeah that's what working here has been like so this one usually comes in pairs like this you know, and so you juggle it as well so you might want to try it sure, because i'm here i would <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. yeah. So if you play like this, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But by the time you are playing the, while you are playing the Ogene, you are playing the Ubo or the Chaka, and then this one is also like blending into it. You'll be amazed by um, what you hear. So that's in your, Thank you. all right. And this is the Ogidi, Ogidi Mwadike. So the Mwadike masquerade is also very fierce. And so we had one of our visitors who said that when she was little, that people often used to tease her that look at her teeth like the body came masquerade at first she didn't understand but when she now saw the picture <laughs> she she started laughing and you know it suddenly made sense because she said when she was little that her teeth was you know a bit um bigger than a um, but she has yeah she has now like grown into it so she no longer feels I, I, don't, I don't know about you know it. you know sometimes exactly i was going to say that those things, those little things that people do to children or children do to themselves to causes them. a lot of insecurity. Insecurity. Because yeah. she didn't even know what it meant. But to her, it must have sounded like one powerful Igbo insult. So, <laughs> yeah. seeing it now, she probably is seeing the humor in it. In but it. then, trust me, it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny it for wasn't her. Funny. I, 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 I could just imagine yeah. what it was like for her. Growing and up. they must have taunted her with it. <laughs> with it, yeah. All right. So you were Afia TV's My Inigo Story last winner. You won the amazing sum of 300,000 Naira. And essentially, the competition makes you tell your story. How did working here help you tell that story? Um, so, <clears throat> so like I already said, I, I love stories. I'm a storyteller. I love books, like from when I was little. So I remember growing up in the village and my dad also loved stories. So after dinner, so my dad would often like, would often like sit around him and he would hold us spellbound with stories. So I grew up like listening to stories. So I could, um, and also writing. Sometimes he would make me write some of those stories. So I grew up writing better than i could even speak the english language right so 
I've always been, I love to tell stories. I love to like create um, images in people's minds with my story. So when Afia called for that story and, and that the was topic in 2022. 2022, yes. And the topic was um, the food culture in Enugu. I mean, I'm like, I mean, this is something that I, I love food. I love Abacha and I love Enugu as a city. Like I've lived in other cities. I've been to like maybe more than half of the states in Nigeria, but Enugu is where I feel most at home with. I'm in where I feel most comfortable in. So, if I had a story that involved telling people about Enugu and talking about food, you know what? We have better combination. So I wrote, and you know, it was it was exciting for me to like have won that competition. Yeah. So, in terms of the exhibitions, because people come here to get a glimpse at what it means to be Igbo, what you essentially find when you go through the history of Igbo. So what kind of exhibitions are done here at the center? Yes, yes, that's basically what the center does. You know, we the, the, we tell the story of Ndibo right from time. That's why our exhibitions cut across like, um, for example, our current exhibition or Dinani, you know, goes back in time to our traditional belief system, what it was like even before Christianity came. And then you have another one, um, Ozemena on the Nigeria Biafra, which, you know, speaks to a more recent history of what happened, you know, between 1967 and 1970. There, there was always like this inter, inter ethnic tensions and crisis from time to time. Then corruption was a problem. I mean, corruption did start today in Nigeria. So, and then the rigging of elections. So there was election in 1964 and 1965 and both elections were rigged. So these are just like the background of what now like led to events of 1960s and then later the war in 1967. So in 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 January of 1966, a group of young army officers led by Chupo Makaduna and Zongu planned and carried out a coup. Now and their intention was that you know that they are going to sanitize the country. So and to do that, they said they were going to like kill off all the top politicians, all the premiers and the prime minister, and that these are the guys causing the problem. They are the ones rigging the election. They are the ones, you know, the corrupt ones. So they will kill them off and start the country on a fresh page. It sounded like a very good idea on paper, but then the coup happened and Tafawa Balewa, the prime minister was killed. The premier of Northern region was killed. Western region was killed. And then about 22 people, in total were killed in that first coup but majority of the people that were killed were either from northern region or western region dr emma Obara was not killed in that first coup namda zipre wasn't killed so it now seemed like it was an Igbo coup like it was against the rest of the country because how do you explain that you know nobody from the eastern region was killed and then after the coup happened agui yurunsi also an eastern that took over power as the the first military head of state so he was the general officer commanding of the army so he was the one in charge of the army so he took over power and then appointed military governors for all the regions and that was when ojuku came into the picture so ojuku was appointed the military governor of eastern region now when Hironsi came into power something he could have done which maybe if he had done would have changed the course of history was to execute those coup plotters like have them arrested and execute them right because i mean you didn't just carry out a coup which is against um the military code but then you also killed the prime minister of a country so he had them arrested and jailed but he didn't execute them see how so this was at the end of the war then this nigerian soldier got the chance to go back home because i mean throughout the period of the war a lot of them were disconnected from separated from their families and he had the chance to go back home and not many of them were lucky like that and then lastly um refugees you can see people trying to find their way back home like the war had ended this was how nigerians in lagos reacted to the news of japan surrender these were refugees trying to find their way back home. And then uh, that's gone on. And then the Secretary of the United, the United Nations at the time, you thought. So interestingly, United Nations actually like refused to intervene because they said it was an internal crisis and there wasn't much they could do. So for like months, weeks after the war ended, 
more refugees people were still like trying to find their way back this was in 1971 the first day that courts reopened because uh, throughout the war nobody was going to court nobody you know schools were closed down shops and businesses and organizations so firms but they they started you know things started reopening a bit you can see children their friend children back to school learning on that trees many of their classrooms have been destroyed so they are sitting down and learning on that trees markets returned to normal you know um, compare this to that picture uh, historical what we saw during the war children playing on the streets playing with this grounded and um, plane something they couldn't do during the war because i mean that would be very dangerous and then you know piles of relief materials ma relief materials were still coming because even though the war was over but hunger was still a problem and it took some time before you know people were people were were, able, were rehabilitated enough and then the work of reintegrating them back into nigeria and um, and we also have like contemporary art so the the exhibitions cut across like different aspects of our history it's like a journey so sometimes we go back in time sometimes you know we come closer to you know recent times that's how our exhibitions are structured depending on so it usually um it depends on what is um relevant at the time like when we opened the ozemena exhibition on the nigeria biafra war it was in 2020 and 2020 marked exactly 50 years the nigeria biafra war ended and we thought it was relevant and important for young people to know the story of the war for themselves apart from maybe stories they've heard from their parents or what they've read from books and you know sometimes you know facts can get distorted that way so we decided to like put up this exhibition tell the story as objectively as possible you know without bias you know tell it the way it is and hopefully people can learn from that history and History doesn't repeat itself, and that's why we titled it Ozemen and Never Again. Yeah, so that's how our exhibitions are structured. This is where it all starts. Where we have the books, you know, children coming to read, and even adults. So we have books, and then they can also come with their own books to read. And the, the library, the Obaku Maka, was donated to the center by Fidelity Bank in 2018. Okay? Yeah. So, so this is the library. Well, I would say that this is a place to be. It's a place to come, it's a place to experience. It's everything. But the most important thing and the problem we face these days is that of sustainability. Where do you see the center in five years? Honestly, objectively speaking, five years from now. Yeah. So in five years time, I'm hoping that the center would have gotten a more permanence and somewhere bigger are more befitting for a center for memories for the war and we're looking at having um, a wider collection right of artifacts and books and you know memorabilia for the war right a wider collection more than much more than what we have and for we to be able to do that we need a bigger space so we'll be able to like have more exhibitions so we would have had them um, in that time i'm hoping that we would have had more exhibitions and more programs as well expanded the reach of our programs reach and impact of our programs and introduced even more programs present a more immersive experience for people when they visit the center for memories that's just you know to um just to summarize, summarize it all but in yeah. terms of getting there what are the challenges that are impeding that and how do you intend to make that five-year plan possible? How can people be a part? How can not just people, but Indibo, Indibo. be a part of getting the center to the height you've put it in five years' time? So far, we know we've, we've, you know, we've depended so much on the generosity of Indibo and a lot of people have donated to the center, supported the work. I mentioned that the library, this library was donated to us by um, Fidelity Bank. And we've also had people sponsor, like one of our documentaries was sponsored by, you know, different um, businessmen and women also who, who identify with the work of the center and they support the work that we do but so much can be done we're calling on you know more Igbo people more Igbo individuals it's really really the center is very very important center of Uka, center of Kendi Igbo and these stories need to be told these stories are very important and they need to be told and if we don't tell these stories they become lost you know history becomes lost you've heard it all from Ifoma it's important for us to support 
and help the center for memories to grow the center does so much i've just received an immersive experience and i wasn't even wearing virtual reality glasses i walked in there with my two eyes no lens in between and i was sucked into the experience of the biafran war the civil war that we've all come to know so it's important for us to show the support and of course to come and visit the center for memories how can you assist first and foremost visit second of all support and tell the story center for memories is already doing that we can all be a part of it and that's all we have for eastern promises today and of course this is the center for memories do well to come here we visit in state and we look forward to helping the center to actualize all their dreams i was your host nathalie Oko. thank you for watching